Hey there folks, how are you doing today? If you're looking for personal training, nutritional advice, maybe you need a training or nutritional program, contact Alpha Fitness today. You can find Alpha Fitness through the Buff Geek Podcast blog.wordpress.com. Yes, that's the website for the Buff Geek Podcast. Hit us up. Make a change. Hashtag AYG. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's Buff Geek here, and I want to say thank you to our sponsors, Alpha Fitness, who was that handsome man speaking just just a moment ago. It's been a little bit since I've done a solo one of these. Actually, just last week when I did, when I did Dunkirk. Easy for me to say. Um, I, uh, oh, wow, I've just finished uh, a bit of a slog. A bit of a slog. I've just finished watching SummerSlam 2017, and, well, god damn, that just proves that you can have a whole bunch of crap go on, but as long as you finish strong, that's what people remember, because I finished that show 20 minutes ago, and I was feeling pumped, I was feeling positive, I was looking forward to the next show, and then I took a second and thought to myself, actually, that's a really, really pretty bad show. Um, and I've actually rated all of the matches um, in the same way that FDM would do. And uh, we're going to add up the ratings at the end. Because right now I feel like, oh yeah, I'm going to watch the next show, that was really exciting, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I think um, once I actually tabulate everything, it won't be that good of a show. So let's get right into it, shall we? We're not going to do deal with the kickoff show because, well, the main show is four plus hours. I got to watch Defenders, which actually I've watched. I got to watch Game of Thrones. There's a lot of stuff to watch. And if you ain't on the main show, I'm not going to review you. I'm sorry. That doesn't mean that, you know, that you're not important or I don't love you. Like, I'm going to watch the Hardy Boys match later on. I'm going to watch the, uh, the Usos and the, uh, the New Day. Their, their tag match apparently it was freaking sweet. But we're going to be talking about SummerSlam today. So obviously, <laughs> spoiler, spoiler alert. And I thought SummerSlam would kick off with Bray Wyatt and Finn Balor. I thought, bring out Finn considering SummerSlam last year was, was his like his big deal. Like he won the Universal Championship last year, although he got injured. I thought it would be a good way to kick it off. Bring in the Demon, the whole thing. And then Bray Wyatt comes out. And... We're going to get to that match in a second, but no, we, we kicked off the show with with John Cena. John Cena is curtain jerking, and that's that's pretty weird, but maybe Cena had to be away early for some other sort of commitment. That's what I kind of believe. This match was atrocious. It was awful. Like, John was obviously in a good mood. He was goofing around, but he didn't take Baron Corbin seriously in any way. Um, Baron Corbin had one good thing going for him, in my opinion, and that was his entrance music, which was totally badass, and they've got rid of that as well for some... It's like the old entrance music was WWE. In fact, it was almost WWF good. And the new one is kind of like TNA 2007. Like, pretty good, but not not the proper stuff, you know? And that's not me hating on TNA, because I actually like TNA. Um, or at least I used to. So we got John Cena coming out, and they they drop that he's a free agent. So presumably, you know, he'll jump on a Raw for WrestleMania season, so they can get I don't know, have John Cena and Undertaker go at it, or John Cena and Roman Reigns go at it. And I know you're like, well, why would John Cena move to Raw to take on Undertaker when they when Taker SmackDown? But no, if Taker appears, oh, sorry, when he appears next, it'll be on a PPV or an RAW. He ain't appearing on SmackDown, I very much doubt. Um, Because SmackDown, at the end of the day, is the B-Show. It's the B-Show. And these are the facts, yo. And we're starting out the night with the B-Show. We've got Cena coming out. Um, Baron Corbin's music totally sucks, like I said. The crowd, the crowd boom, and it's, John Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. And it's, uh, he has a good laugh with it, and it's quite fun, you know. It's kind of tongue-in-cheek, like, it's like, we hate you, but... You know, you've put on a whole bunch of good matches for us in this time. You know, big match, John. He can definitely go. You can't say that. I mean, watch his matches with D. Bry. Watch some of his matches. His first match with Randy Orton at SummerSlam 2007, I want to say, was fucking good. Um, watch 
his matches was with um, 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 AJ Styles, gorgeous stuff, you know, his, his uh, US title matches that he had, the US um, Invitational, I think it was called, on Raw, that was brilliant, like that, that US Invitational really sold me on Cena. I missed the, 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 the Springboard Stunner, actually, I know he didn't hit, always hit it, but I quite liked it, and I... And do you know what? We didn't get that tonight. We didn't get the um, the Canadian Destroyer. We didn't really get anything. We just got Baron Corbin putting a general heel beatdown, like a kind of superstars or shotgun Saturday night beatdown on Cena. Constantly, always being angry at every single thing ever. And it's like, fucking hell, dude. If you're always angry, how can you... What, what other level can you go to? What other level is there? There's none. Like, take... I tweeted him, speak to Jake Roberts. Jake Roberts always said, you know, everyone else is shouting and screaming in the promos. So I'd take it real slow and make sure that you'd have to lean in and listen to me and actually care about what I'm saying. And then sometimes you would get someone like Mankind doing that. And that was Mick Foley's one. You know, I think a few guys did it. Someone said to me, Match Man did it as well. I didn't really realise that till the other day. That, yeah, he actually did. You know, so but Baron Corbin's promos are boring, but he's always shouting, constantly fucking bitching, moaning, and it's like, God damn, you're just so tedious. He's it's like he bores me to tears. He's he's worse. Is he worse? I think he's worse than um than Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett used to be the same for me, like good look. He was an amazing promo. But his ring work was just so boring. So, so boring. I just never got what people saw in him. Didn't get it at all. Um, Corbin should never, ever, ever, ever take his t-shirt off because he's got a horrible body. And you're like, whoa, that's a bit harsh. But, but <sighs> his shoulders and arms look good, but then when he takes the t-shirt off, his pecs don't look good in his stomach. He's a man that was really fat before because he was, I think he was uh, some sort of football player, and he's lost too much weight too quickly, and it's meant that he's got a lot of loose skin going on, and his, his tummy isn't tight, and when he's got kind of, he's meant to be this badass, fucking hard man, you know, and then when he's got this kind of saggy, like this, his stomach just looks, there's someone, um, who is it that said it, Adam Blompier, I think his name is, from What Culture, said you've got a sad, sad tummy. And that's <laughs> that cracked me up. Shout out to What Culture if you like wrestling, check them out. Um, yeah, it just does not look good. He, he kind of he just looks soft and weak, and you're like, that's not what I'd expect from some big tough guy. I'm not saying that you need to be built like a Greek god before people get on me for that, but it just it just spoils that hardness mystique. Um, so yeah, this match really sucked. It was just bad, 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 bad all the way. I'm trying to see if I've got any. There's a quite a nice bit. Probably the best bit of the match was when we had uh, there was a choke slam backbreaker, which was pretty sweet from Corbin. I've got to admit that. And um, there was where's your briefcase? Where's your briefcase? Now that was pretty cool. Um, Cena goofing off was actually kind of funny, but it let you know that Cena wasn't bothered once he left the the ring. He was kind of pissed. I heard something about Corbin disrespected some of the troops recently, and maybe that's why he's gotten super buried. Really bad match. Out of five, I'm going to give it a one, and I think I'm being generous here. It might even be a point five. I might even change that to a point five. Although I did like, I did like the the choke slam backbreaker and a couple other things, but no, it's getting a point five because it was that bad. Ha. Huh. Suck it. Match two, we've got Naomi um, taking on Natty. Oh, sorry. I would like to say that um, I predicted Cena to go over Corbin in that one, and uh, and I was right. Uh, match two, we've got Naomi taking on Natty. I've written Naomi over Natty. Um, one fall! Title, uh, the title looks like a toy. Um, as much as Naomi's um, glow belt does look quite cool, um, it looks good when the lights are out, but when the lights are on and you're actually looking at it, it can look a little bit cheap and plasticky. But I get it, it's fun, uh, kids will buy it. I really like Naomi, I've always liked Naomi. Um, she's so athletic, she can do a lot of cool innovative things. I like the whole glow thing. The crowd are still dead for this match. Um, 
There was a pretty sweet blockbuster to the floor from Naomi and a nice sharpshooter reversal. But why is she taking on Natty? And why did they have in the promo, they had um, skinny blonde Miss Money in the back, what's her name? I've forgotten her body name now. Carmela. And she doesn't even appear. Like, at least have her come out and distract her a little bit just to get her on the show and... I don't know why Natty would go over Naomi. Not that Natty doesn't deserve it, but it's been her first title in six years and she's always been not really pushed that well and also, unless they're going to make Carmela into a face, it doesn't really make sense for a heel to take the championship from another heel. And also, you've got a glowing title bell on someone that's fun and can speak to kids and seems to be quite a bit of a role model, likeable, genuine. Um, it can go and do an interview and then turn up to the ring and still be the same character. Like, I don't know why you take the title off her when you can sell a whole bunch of merch. It just, like, like glow bands and glow shoes and glow this and glow that. Like, it makes no sense to me. And then having Naomi crying at the end, I mean, it looked good, but, like, as in it looked believable, but... It just made her look weak and, I don't know, like a crybaby. It just didn't work for me and it was kind of weird that Natty won. Um, so I gave this, I mean, there's the match was actually okay, but I gave it a 1.5. I'll just let you know, five stars is like whew, amazing, obviously. One is no, 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 no. Three is, is decent and I'd watch it again. So that's going to give you an idea of the brawler. 1.5, I'll never watch that match again. Um... They put in an okay effort. The, the finish made no sense. The fact that Carmel wasn't there, it is what it is. Then we got match three, which is which is going to be Kaz, Big Kaz versus the Big Show. I miss Big Show's big beard, and the new trimmed beard kind of makes him look like old Big Show, and he doesn't look. It's for some reason, even though he is totally jacked, he just doesn't look jacked in his singlet. But when he's on regular clothes or working at the gym, he always looks jacked. It's really weird. But it seems that, I mean, I like the way that Kaz was, was, was walking about. He seems to have a new confidence. He seems to be fitting into his role of heel more. I'm not quite sure what Tani used. Him and Shane just went proper, proper Triple H. Like, oh, the Tan was too, too much. But they, they announced Kaz as being 276 pounds, and they announced Corbin as being about 270 uh, Kaz needs to be announced at about 300 odd if he's if he's 7 foot tall and he's not exactly lean you know and he's going to be put beside Braun Strowman at some point they need to be having him at a 320, 330 like you'd, you'd buy it right I mean he's maybe 7 foot tall Kane sort of size he's not 270 I mean okay his shoot weight's probably 270 that's probably a shoot weight but I don't know someone's messed up there because then you've got Roman Reigns Roman Reigns is only 10 pounds lighter than him, which is just less than a stone. I don't... I s Someone needs to keep an eye on the weights. I know Vince would be like, 245, pal! But that's... It's just all off. Um, I said Kaz would go over on this one. I think it was pretty obvious. I didn't like the whole big show with the busted up hand thing that Stevens can try. Plus, you got the shark tank. And the announce team really buried Enzo. Um, the match itself was hamstrung by gimmicks. Enzo spoke for ages at the start. The fans just were not into him. I don't think he's terribly sympathetic. He's just, he's more annoying. He is annoying, and I think Kaz, but Kaz is not. He's not got the right sort of charisma, so he's also not become a face out of this. So they've kind of made a heel and a heel and and like an annoying X Pack sort of Nat type heel and. Doing the whole oil up thing, coming down at the cage, just like, dropping down right in front of Kaz for a boot in the face, just looked bad. Like they've they've messed these guys up big style. They should never have done anything with these guys breaking them up. They should have kept it them together for a little bit longer. Gosh, sent them back to Smack, sent them over to SmackDown for a wee title run, for a change of scenery, for example. I mean, I know they kind of they sent the New Day over. New Day still seems fresher than they do, and they were the new fresh thing. It's just I never liked Enzo Mori that much. I, mean, I kind of like the, the, the entrance originally, but he just went on too long, too, too long. The announcers were burying him all the way, and that's to do with him being a dick on a bus, apparently, and Roman Reigns kicking him off, and all this type of stuff. Allegedly, although I'm sure they say that... I'm sure they would, wouldn't say that for, for definite. Did I even rate this match? Oh, rating. Zero out of five. That's a zero. That was tedious, horrible. I actually started doing some computer work there. 
um, and I try and watch all the matches, but sometimes it was, just, it was just too much, and I hope you're feeling me with that. Um, they had a wee segment after that with uh, John Cena's Tap Out Body Spray, which looks cheap. It looks like t terribly cheap plastic with a sticker on it. It looks awful. I don't know what they're charging for that, but I can't believe anyone would buy it. Maybe that one's marketed towards kids and teenagers, but it doesn't look like... Teenagers usually want to have something that seems like they're an adult, so I don't know who's going to buy that. It was just... It looks cheap. And then we've got D. Brian Kerr um, with this kind of... The segment was almost going to work, and then it just went totally lame. And I don't know, like, Kurt didn't seem that much taller than D. Brian. Kurt is about... He's closer to this... Well, he's probably about 5 foot 10, 11... And Debray is much shorter to compare to other superstars, so they must have done some weird chicanery with boxes or something there, because it was weird, because they were right in each other's face pretty much. There wasn't that much height in between them. Um, I didn't like it. It was it, I waited to get them on the show, but it just seemed kind of lame. Um, one out of five, just because you got to see the two of them together. But what a match they could have, eh? What a match they could have. Um, match four... Um, it's Orton versus Rusev. I said Orton over Rusev. I thought it was going to be a pretty decent match with Orton getting a good RKO. And uh, the jumpstart, I mean, I was I was really despondent after the Big Show match. The jumpstart totally woke me up. I was like, yes, let's do this. Rusev is looking good. He's looking in shape. He's got new boots with the Rusev thing on them. Or maybe they're not that new, but I've not watched Raw on SmackDown because basically they're not on the network. And um, it's not on the network. I'm, I'm not watching it. I'm not... Not paying for Sky Sports or whatever as well as the network as well as Netflix as well as this, you know what I mean? So, um... And then our, then he gets an RKO. Like a sick, sick RKO. One of the best RKOs ever. Rusev took that. Sweet, like a champ. Randy's still got his hoodie on. Pin. Rusev's just a bum now. And he was like the guy came on an attack. He was a freaking killer. Like, Rusev isn't being the world champion, but Jinder Mahal has. And I love me some gender, but it doesn't really make sense considering the mega push that Rusev had. Like before, I was like, oh, Kurt Angle's finally going to come in and beat Rusev. Or Rusev's the guy to take out Brock Lesnar. Now he's just a bum. Like, Rusev against Samoa Joe would have been sweet back in the day. Nope, nope, absolute bum. <sighs> Gosh. They need to send him to NXT and like, have him, not repackage him, but have him kind of build himself back up and become a champ there. Because, oh dear. Was a good RKO though, um, so the the rating is a a one just for the RKO and the jump start was pretty decent. But I mean, obviously it wasn't a match, so that's a one out of five. Then we come to match five, and we're not even this is just two hours in a four hour card. Uh, Bailey, as far as I could tell, was booed, which at least isn't a react a reaction from the crowd. This uh, Brooklyn crowd sucked. So if you're listening from Brooklyn, you guys made the show bland as shit for the first half, but obviously. You were fed shit, so what do you expect? So I feel sorry for you guys being alive there and paying that big money to watch some of that. So we see Sasha and Bailey, you know, kind of like, oh, hey, what's up? Yeah, let's pretend to be friends still. But I feel like they're going to turn Bailey. Bailey kind of gave a little bit of a scowl as, as Sasha went away. And then Sasha took ages to come out for a match like with this fan thing on. And that's when I started to notice, where are the, what is wrong with this? Why is this looking cheap? And it's because the stage is basically the Raw or SmackDown stage, or, or, or pretty much that. There's no pyro. I don't think there was a pyro through the entire night. No smoke apart from Finn Balor. I mean, they cheap-assed it. Like, she came out with a freaking fan on her shoulders, and that was when she was trying to act all impressed with it. It was shitty, shitty, shitty. A bad outfit. It took ages for it to come out. It made the backstage segment, which was walking to war, walking past Bailey, look lame, and not, and obviously look like it was filmed before because she had to get that stupid thing on. Um, and I said it'd be Bliss over Sasha because they just had Bliss do like a little promo for No Mercy, and I'm like, oh well, Bliss has been everywhere. This is sweet. And you know the crowd's still dead and. Then they start cheering for Bliss a little bit, and I'm like, okay, this is cool. I like, uh, I like Bliss. She's good fun, and I, I, I dig her. And she has, she's got some good innovative moves again. She's a little bit different. Um, her size makes her interesting. She does some cool, cool stuff. I like the bit with the ring skirt where she pulled it and Sasha fell off. Sasha does a really good job of selling the fact that she's hurt because quite often I think she's injured herself again. 
There was a couple injuries earlier on in her career. So Sasha's good, but I just don't take to her. I just think that she's she 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 should be a heel. Um, and I can't believe that Sasha won, but the crowd didn't care. So bada bing, bada boom. It is is what it is. Like no one cared that she won. So does it matter? It was an okay match. It went on seemed like forever. It went on way too long. I put two out of five here. And at this point, I was thinking, am I even going to bother covering this show? I was like, this sucks, sucks, sucks. Then we get this terrible advert for KFC with Goldust doing the old Goldust gimmick, but in the new Goldust paint. If they did it in the old Goldust paint, you could have bought that they filmed it before. With him being some sort of badass healer meant to be, it, it, I think it spoils his character. Um, as usual, Heath Slater was the standout and it was absolute quality. Um, Why... In terms of um, what's her name, the Irish Irish last kicker Becky Lynch. In terms of her saying, "Why can't the Colonel be a girl?" Because the, it's a dude, it's Colonel Sanders, like it's the Kentucky Fried Colonel, it's a guy. It's just, can we not just have it as a guy? Like we don't see guys trying to be girls, like being like, "I, I want to be," I don't know, fucking Hannah Montana. Like why can't Hannah Montana be a, a dude? Because it's, she's a girl. Can people not accept these things? I don't know why everyone's got everyone's got to be able to do everything, you know. Ugh. Anyway, that's a comment from another time. Then we had this, uh, the the thanks to Machine Gun Kelly for this song that's totally shit. Like the song is so chill, so lax. It's like plodding. It's like phone it in, blah blah blah, phone it in, much like this pay per view. But 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 we're on to match six of the night. We're two hours in, and it's. Balor versus Bray, and I was like, well, Balor's going to get the win, obviously, Bray started attacking him, sweet video package, Bray pouring the blood all over him, the bloodbath thing, that was totally cool, um, I personally don't like Finn Balor at all, I don't like his wrestling, I don't really like his style, I think he's too small, I really dislike the demon because it looks hokey, Um and I liked it even less because I don't know why Finn, uh, why Bray Wyatt would be scared of Finn Balor's demon. Like, being scared of Undertaker? Yes. Being scared of Kane? Yes. I could even buy that the Boogeyman would scare him a little bit because he's super weird. But being scared of this Finn Balor with some paint on? Like, I don't, like, what's so demonish about, like, what is that? It's just, it's just silly. I don't buy that Bray would be scared of him. This match, they turned it up. It was a decent, decent match. These are two guys that are saying, like, we had the straps. Give us another shot. Please, please, please. I feel sorry for Bray because he doesn't seem to be used very well and I usually shit on him for being a jobber. <clears throat> but I really, really dug this match. It was really fast-paced. It showed how much Bray could go. I think they worked well together. As much as I think that Finn Balor's too small, his size disparity worked in this match and it managed to look very believable beside Bray, so I can eat my own words there. Um... So I'm just reading some of my notes as well because I took a whole bunch of notes while I was doing this. I gave it a 3 out of 5. Like, I would be interested to watch the match again. I would even be inclined to push it to a, a little bit more than a 3, but we'll just keep it a 3 out of 5 right now. I still don't think Balash Demon thing should be a thing. Like, I just don't find it scary. Maybe if he wore a bigger mask when he came out, but those, like, that hat thing with the, the, the I don't know what's meant to be, the Predator... What's some candy? Predator fucking hair coming off of it. I didn't, uh, I don't know. But, first good match of the night, so we're away. And then we move on to match number seven, which is basically Shield Light versus Cesaro and Sheamus. And I picked that Shield would go over Cesaro and Sheamus, and I was right. I thought it was weird that Cesaro and Sheamus came out first. But. But, uh, yeah. <sighs> It's kind of weird that they had Cesaro and Sheamus coming out first. I know they wanted to get the big pop for um, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose coming out. And Seth's entrance is fucking sweet. The, mu the music's great. And the, the like it, it gets you ramped up. And then Dean comes out with like his girlfriend's sweater on. And looks kind of silly. And I don't know. Like I thought they would have had them come out second because they were doing the S.H.I.E.L.D. music thing. I suppose they can save that for another time, so that makes sense. But if anything, Dean should have came out first and then had Seth come out, because he's got the better entrance. Just saying, better entrance, better outfit, the whole thing. 
Um, this was another really good match, good promo video beforehand. Um, I really like the bar's new outfit. They've kind of got that um, that uh, taxi, that taxi kind of gig going on. Um, I like the military jackets. The mil the like they're going to war. You know that's pretty cool. There was some really nice stuff going on here. There was a uh, a bit when Seamus is about to. I think he was going to do like a front, uh, I guess some sort of suplex or something. Or he was going to he was going to be suplexed by Dean Ambrose, and he was giving some some slaps on the side while they were getting into position. And Corey covered it really well by saying palm strikes from Sheamus. There's quite a few things that Corey said during this uh, show that seemed to really really work and just cover things. Um, the Celtic clothesline, which was when Sheamus jumped off the top and kind of gave the Doomsday device to I want to say it was Dean Ambrose. It looked really bad. I think they were just they were too close to each other. It didn't look good. But the cool thing about Sheamus and Cesaro is that they try a lot of stuff, and I really buy the fact that they're badasses. Um, I kind of think of them as two guys that are looking for respect. I I also think of them as kind of genuinely being good pals. Like if you listen to the Chris Jericho podcast, they're on that. That's they're they've got a good banter, and they, they remind me of them. Um, there's like this bond there. You can see. Kind of like Seth and Dean, kind of like Eddie and Benoit actually, and that's who I kind of think of. Two guys that maybe deserve a better, a better lot in life. Well, I've lost my notes now. Ooh, I've lost my notes. Um, double crucifix powerbomb was sweet as. Um, what was it? Was there was double. Oh yes, Seth jumped over the top rope at the start with a little plancher, and uh, the bar caught him. And then just launched him, and Seth ran it, landed not flat back on his side. It looked sore, really, really sore. Um, and during the match, Cesaro brought, uh, bust out the sharpshooter and the crossface, which, you know, just hats off to the Canadians for having some good submissions, you know what I'm saying? So that was pretty cool, although no one can do the crossface quite like Benoit. He was just so jacked, it looked like he was absolutely just destroying you. Uh, I don't care, care what anyone says. Benoit, the wrestler, fantastic. I think it's harder for people because he didn't, his real name was his, his wrestling name. But Chris Benoit, the wrestler, one of the best ever. Easy. Um, really good finish here with the Hurricane Runner from Seth onto Cesaro, going into Sheamus, blocking the white noise. Super kick, super kick. I think a triple super kick, actually. Then a knee and dirty deeds from Dean. They're the champs. Although Dean can't be losing that vest because he looks weak. Like he doesn't look he doesn't look built in any way. And he at least for being that lean and slight, he should have a six pack and he's not. And I don't know, I get a lot of complaints from some of the guys at the gym that the wrestlers don't look that a lot of them don't look that, that solid anymore. And there's reasons for that, but he needs to keep that vest on, you know what I'm saying? This match got a three and a half out of five. So far, best match of the night. Had me up and down. Cool sequences. Really good tag match. And I'm thinking, wow, two two matches have been decent so far. This is getting better. Um, and then we're on to the US title match. And I've already written here that uh, AJ is going to go over Owens and that Shane's going to screw Owens. I mean, I don't know if I'm really good at this. Or it's just really predictable, I can't decide. But, that's pretty much what happened. Um, the announcer, Tom, I forget his last name, gave away the finish at the very start. He said, every champ that's had a special referee at SummerSlam has lost the belt. Therefore, well, you know. Um, Shane was sweating like crazy. He was too tanned. He looked... <sighs> absolutely gassed out and gassed up he looked massive he's on way too much gear how solid is he looking like he looks fucking jacked like damn that's the problem with having like a really jacked boss who doesn't wrestle that often that they look at least vince was like this anomaly where he could do it but because he was vince he was like this this monster he was he's not like a real person but the fact that shane is shane's like a real person who's jacked up bigger than most of the wrestlers it makes him look kind of silly vince just is like a comic book villain it's amazing it's kind of like frieza in final form you know when he takes off the suit <laughs> jacked um 
Hopefully you got that reference. If you didn't get that reference, then you probably don't know what the fusion one is that Cesar and Seamus do either. Fusion! Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to look through my notes again. Yeah, the amount of sweat Shane was, was pouring out. I was like Brock Lesnar when he first came back to WWE in 2012, um, maybe in 2013. Um, some of the matches they were Triple H he was sweating buckets all the time he did not look healthy there's a lot of stuff going on with um, there's a lot of stuff going on with Shane missing falls and miscounting and the guys getting his face and Shane pushed them and Shane looked like he wanted to go there's a sweet line from KO saying you fall off buildings why can't you get up for this count after like a wee splash or whatever good good point um, the finish came when Owens uh, well, Owens thinks that he's won the title, but AJ's got his foot in the ropes. Turn round, he gets done in by by AJ, and you know, obviously, Owens and Shane are going to have a problem. I think Shane might get booed in this one. Actually, I don't think they're going to turn Shane heel. I think they're just going to slow build it for a Spyro series, but I think can't make it last all the way till Mania. So I don't know. It just felt like there, sh there, there should be something more happening, and what like there should be something more screwy happening in one of the title matches, or something should happen, or someone should have kicked up the finisher. I felt like I don't know. Everyone was holding back a little bit, or just being a little bit less creative, and maybe they were. So that match, I gave it a three point two five out of five, only because there was lots of cool spots. All the bits with Shane, as much as they were too much, didn't look botchy. They all looked pretty good. And I was pretty into the match, so still not, it's not the match of the night. It is not. Then we've got match number nine: Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jinder Mahal. I said that chances are they're going to put Shinsuke over. They told Jinder's story in the start, and I kind of thought, oh, it's, that's the story, and this is the end, and we're going to give Shinsuke a wee run, and then maybe Cena gets the win back later on since he put him over recently, or something like that, right? Um, I can't stand Shinsuke Nakamura. I can't stand him. I like his entrance theme. Oh, 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 you know how it goes. Anyway, I like his entrance theme. That's it. I hate his look. I hate his style. I hate his physique. I hate his face. I hate his everything about him, apart from that thing. And Jinder comes out without any any explosions, no fanfare. It just looked like, like you know, sometimes they forget the pyro. It looked like that for some of these wrestlers tonight. Like they could have a bit of pyro, bit of smoke. Pff, what the hell's going on? I know it's a cost-cutting measure, but really, it makes the wrestlers just not look quite as good. Just as well that uh, Jinder looks like an absolute jacked-up, roided monster. I don't care what anyone says. He is absolutely on crazy amounts of gas. Those gynecomastia nipples and those spots on his back—they look sore. But you know what? He also looks like a million bucks at the same time, and he works out really hard. I follow him on Instagram, and he's a bit of an inspiration, considering he got fired in 2014, and is now the champ, you know? The champ is there every week, which is interesting, because a lot of people don't buy him as the champ, yet he's there every week, and people say, well, Brock isn't a good champ, because he's not there every week. Well, Brock is Brock, you know what I mean? Um, but I like Jinder. I think Jinder looks good with the belt, and I was really worried that it wouldn't be, I don't know, it wouldn't be... I like Jinder with a belt. Let's just put it that way. Um, it was a decent match. Um, I thought these were some of the better strikes I've seen from Shinsuke Nakamura. And I proper, proper marked out for Jinder's win. Like, that was the biggest market moment of the night. Because I really like... I like Jinder. I like his, his actual real-life story. Um, I'm not a fan of Shinsuke. I'm just, I'm just not. Um, Shinsuke had no idea how to take Jinder's finish, which is kind of funny. Um... Some people have said it's the same sort of match Jinder's done. He kind of comes in and he, they call it, JBL keeps saying that he grinds you down. He's not got any flashy moves or whatever. He's he's a decent hand, you know. But I think that he's a good investment. I think you keep the title on for a little bit longer and keep pushing it, you know. And I'm glad they did it. Um, for personal reasons, because I was so happy that Jinder retained and I didn't expect it, this is my favourite match of the night in a lot of ways, but I'm only going to give it a 3 out of 5. Would I watch it again? I'd give it a, maybe a wee punt. But it's a, it's a really it's basically a 3 because Jinder won. Really, it's a 2.5 if you don't like Jinder, maybe less. So, I know I'm getting a lot of hate right now. I'm sorry, folks, but I do like Jinder Mahal. Then match number 10 is the main event, the real main event, and pretty much 
it was pretty much a one match card when they announced all these four guys were taking on well, well were fighting for the Universal Championship I was like well that's that's the match they're going to care about and obviously they didn't really care that much about other matches the road agents who did the first two hours fucking obviously didn't care were shit um, she's 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 Shizaro Sheamus ah. the bar easy for me to say I was trying to say something clever and I just totally messed up the bar obviously really tried to make a, a spectacular match so does Seth and Dean you know Bray and, Bray and uh, Finn have got something to prove uh, Jinder's trying to prove something it was I mean should Shinsuke maybe have won yeah maybe maybe he should have like Ken and Joe should have won last month maybe speaking of which uh, Michael Cole said that Roman Reigns has got an advantage because he's actually faced Brock Lesnar before where the other two haven't faced him in singles competition and I'm like great balls of fire dude last month remember that like a whole month build towards it what's wrong with you so that was kind of weird Michael Cole you kind of suck a little bit um let me have a look let me look I lost my I lost my position there we go um they also said that, it was, that there was more championship matches tonight than any other night in SummerSlam history. Well, that's because this event went on for 12 freaking hours. So of course it was. Big booze for Roman Reigns. And there was a wee drop of Taker's name, which made me think, oh, I was hoping Taker would turn up. Hoping, hoping, hoping. I'm glad Jojo got some new shoes. Thank you, Bray, for buying her those, because I was sick of those ballet things with the straps, with the string around the ankle. Boring. Um, now, Brock... It wasn't just like a Brock smash match. Brock got absolutely wasted by everyone at the start. He got the Kokita clutch as a finisher. No, is that right? Yes, that's right. Then he got speared by Roman Reigns through the barrier. Then he got um, the running power slam from Braun Strowman through a table. So that's three finishers, plus another one, plus a table dropped on him. And then he gets carted out. So that's pretty badass, but it is kind of annoying that Brock only, maybe they say like Brock only takes finishers because then you get about 8, 10 of the guy's finishers through the entire night. But Brock does 2 or 3 moves and the other guy does 2 or 3 moves the whole night. And it's it's it's, it's, it's kind of cool in some ways but also Brock can go like I want to see like 2002 to 2004 like his 2003 reign when he was taking on Benoit, Kurt, Ray, Eddie, Edge, all the guys on Smackdown. A train, amazing matches. Like, bring me some of that, Brock. That's what I want to see. As much as the stuff is a good spectacle, and I don't mind a like a guy that does a couple of moves. And like, I don't. I, 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 I'm a big fan of Goldberg. You know, I like that style, and it's got its place in the card. Just like Randy Orton getting a surprise win, keeping his moves strong has a place in the card in certain ways. But I mean, I would have been pissed if I'd paid for this pay per view. I mean, I've got the network, so it's okay. But if you pay the 50 quid or whatever it is for the pay-per-view, or I don't know what it is. But I would be really annoyed so far. Well, the other matches have kind of brought it back a little bit. So Brock takes all the moves, then we're thinking, going to be a new champion. I was really thinking Roman was going to have the lights go out on him, and Taker was going to stop him, and we were going to have Braun pin Joe, and Brock would not be there. Text Brock, it means it gets Taker and Roman, you know, blah, blah, blah. But they're all say the cats won't get all one they're going, once they're going to save it, and this match was just off the chain, off the hook, whatever kind of phrase you want, it was loads of false finishes, it got me out of my seat a whole bunch of times, uh, Brock just took finisher after finisher, I kept thinking he was going to go down, I felt like Samoa Joe kind of got forgotten about in the match, I feel like uh, Braun got a really decent go of it and so did Roman and Brock kind of just had to take stuff and Joe got forgotten about, so it was kind of weird, um, you can see who the, who the favourites are, where they're going and I kind of like the fact that they kept just taking Brock out and, you know, really going for it that way. But also, I want to see Brock kind of wrestle. But I've wrestled multi man matches before, and they're they're tough to book, and they're they're a bit of a pain in the ass. So, I mean, this one was really really fun. Every time Rowan went for something, and you like, after the first ten or fifteen minutes, I thought that Taker was going to come out. A little bit disappointed that he never came out, but loads of falsies. Um, I think it'll still happen in the future. Brock retaining had me really pumped because I feel like Braun versus Brock should happen one on one because they didn't really do that much in this one so they could get another match out of them and I think Braun Strowman's time's coming um, as a just push him as a face I think Samoa Joe um, needs a title I mean I would be happy if he suddenly got shook up superstar shake up style sent to Smackdown came in taps out gender I'd be up for that and that means you've got 
Braun and Joe as champs on either brand. Two new champs. Two guys maybe think, ah, would they get it? Especially be nice for Joe. <clears throat> Joe gets the real, real title. Um, although I like the Universal title, that's what I would fancy book. Um, this match, just loads of stuff happened. So much, like this bad, bad, badass stuff. Four out of five. I'd maybe even, I'd maybe be even convinced. You know, I'm getting too excited. Now. I'd maybe even be convinced to say four and a, four point two five out of five. Just a freaking sweet, sweet match. And you go, yes, that was brilliant, you know. Um, the second two hours of the show was really good, and that's all I would have needed to watch, personally. Um, and if it was just based on the second two hours, this pay-per-view, in fact, I'm going to do some counting right now. Okay, this is some quick calculations. I might have got it wrong, I'm sure. If I did, someone will tell me. But out of 50 possible points, this pay-per-view, even though finished really strong, only came in at 22.25 out of 50 so it's a dud um, I would suggest it's kind of weird if you're listening to this but not watching the show I've not watched the show already but just say you did just say you heard the results you decide to listen to this and then you're going to watch the show later just start off two hours in with Bray and Finn that's going to be a fucking phenomenal show that's like a you know a, th- a three and a half four maybe a little bit more show for those two hours and the whole thing before that was just piss really really bad I'm kind of interested to watch the pre-show but I just don't know when I'd fit it in to be perfectly honest and even if I was to watch I don't know when I'd manage to podcast upload it etc etc et so um, I think that <coughs> excuse me John Cena was wasted on the show um, Baron Corbin is just a bum um, I don't understand why Natty went over Naomi, I think they made a disservice to Naomi there when they could sell a lot of merch, just based shoot purely from a business standpoint, um, and Natty's been not important for a long time although I'm always down with someone who's worked hard to get in their due I just think it's weird at the expense of Naomi maybe uh, maybe Carmelo could have got the title and Natty could have came in as a face and got that that nostalgic rub and had the whole Bret Hart thing and a little bit of the Hart family and blah blah you know they could have done that that would have worked or even Natalia versus Charlotte like I was up for that for NXT I think it could be done again but I digress I mean where was Charlotte my Charlotte was not on the show I mean what the fuck huh um what else Big Kaz I think can work as a heel and the fact that Braun Strowman's blatantly a face now they need Kaz as a heel but I just don't know where he's going to fit in um, he seems like a mid-carder at best, so we see he probably needs a mouthpiece. Enzo Amore, I think, is so done, like done, 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 done. Maybe a SmackDown, maybe a 205, like he's five pounds heavier than the guys in 205, so <laughs> I don't know. Actually, it's interesting, if you follow the guys on Insta, sometimes they post their real weights, you know, they're weighing in, they're like, oh yeah, totally ripped, or <clears throat> getting, getting the weight up. <coughs> Excuse me. So then you see what they actually weigh instead of like their fake ass weight. Um, what else was there? Uh, yeah, Alexa Bliss, I think, shouldn't have lost the title here. I think Sasha and Bailey could do a heel face thing, and Alexa could do something with the title separately somewhere else on the card. And then you've got like it doesn't always have to be about like the women's bit, it doesn't always have to be about the title. They could have like the title one, and then they could have another thing for the ladies, like two things. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, Finn and Bray delivered better than I thought they were going to do. If they were given more time, it could be even better. Maybe they should have given Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks like 25% less and given it to Bray and Finn. That would have been a better better score for me. Um, I don't think they're finished yet. I think they'll take each other on at no mercy. And I was, I'm pretty excited for that one. I, I think it was a really good match. Um, the Bar are just fantastic. I'm loving those guys. I hope there's title shots and... I would like it if those guys won titles and stayed friends. Like, maybe one wins a title on Raw, one wins a title on SmackDown, something like that. You know, I, I dig those guys, and I miss how people used to be friends. You'd have, like, Triple H and The Rock never, ever, ever have got on. And that was cool, and there's, there's very rarely that now. And then the other thing was guys like, um, you know, uh, why am I drawing a blank here? This is really bad. Like, The Rock and Mankind were kind of always pals, you know. There were certain wrestlers who were always friends. Chris and Eddie were always friends. Even if they were, one was here, one was a face, they were kind of, they'd be cordial to each other. So I, I miss that, and I think that could work really well with Sheamus and Cesaro. They're always going to be that bond there. They should exploit that. 
KO against Shane. Cool. I think Shane will get booed. AJ. <clears throat> AJ needs to go to better things. AJ needs to win the Rumble and main event Mania and be the man. Like, AJ is so freaking good. Everything he does is so perfect, you know. For my money, I'd want AJ to come and take the title off Brock. Because as much as I love Brock, um, that'd be a way to put AJ over and I just think AJ is fantastic. Missing Daniel Bryan, missing Kurt Angle, I wish they'd let them two wrestle. Um, Jinder, I really like him as champion actually. I feel like they need to develop him a little bit more before they take the title off of him. Otherwise he might turn into like a Jack Swagger type champion or Dolph Ziggler. Where was Dolph? Is he still signed? Like, What's going on there? I suppose that's why he's no longer Colonel Sanders, right? Um, I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy! Um, and the main event was just wow. I mean, this is... I was really worried it was going to be a one-match show, but the main event was wow. So the first two hours sucked, the second two hours good. Um, don't watch the first two hours. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Um, oh, I, 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 I thought Brock was probably going to retain because um, crowning Roman in the Fatal 4-Way wasn't going to work. They want to save that. And I didn't think they'd give it to Joe or Braun because it always seems a little bit... <laughs> flat when you give a guy a title for his first time in a fatal four way so I was kind of hoping they wouldn't do that Brock retaining is a bit of a surprise especially all the punishment he took and I think Taker looms Taker looms and we're going to get it and I heard that he's in good shape so fingers crossed anyway what do you guys think of the show what do you guys think of my review do you think that I got it right have I trashed some of your favourites have I have I put some on a pedestal that you dislike? Maybe you're a Shinsuke guy, I don't get it. Maybe you're a gender guy, then I do get it. We're going to be reviewing Game of Thrones this week. This is going to be the sixth episode, which is like the... This is like episode... This is like the second last episode, so this one we usually expect a whole bunch of shit to go down. We're also going to review The Defenders this week. And... Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll manage to squeeze in a movie news as well. But Game of Thrones and Defenders is definitely happening. It's going to be filmed on Wednesday and it's going to drop on the Thursday, so one day earlier. So make sure to come back. Thanks for listening, folks. And remember, for all things geekery, there's some fitness stuff on there, there's some wrestling stuff on there, there's Dragon Ball Z, there's Game of Thrones, there's. there's a. Marvel, obviously, there's DC for a whole ton of geeky stuff. Go to the Buff Geek Podcast blog .wordpress.com. There's some really cool Game of Thrones uh, theories in there. There's Defenders episode reviews written by hashtag it's Steve. Um, obviously, there's the other podcasts. There's Star Wars news. There's so much stuff on there. And there's going to be um, some training plans on there as well some free training plans so you guys can get yourself in some top shape and maybe be the next WWE superstar. That's all for now. I want to thank our sponsors Alpha Fitness. Hit them up for training, nutritional programs, the whole thing. Even just follow them on, on the Facebooks, on the Twitters and the Instagrams for motivation every day. I think I'm out of here. Hashtag The Buff Geek Podcast. Where's your briefcase? Where's your briefcase? Fucking gone with your push, that's where it is. Motherfucker.